Hello, General. Uh, Phoenix Huang with Hong Kong Phoenix TV. Uh, I have a question about the, because uh, recently there was a newly released, uh, revised uh, Chinese aircraft, uh, J31, the newest version, uh, which indicates that it, it has some uh, newly uh, weapon-loaded cap uh, capacity. So uh, I remember last year that you mentioned in Pentagon that you said the comparison with the Chinese uh, J20, J20 and J31 cannot compete with the, with the US F30, uh, 35 or 22. So do you have any, some uh, new studies on the Chinese new, new, newest aircraft? Yeah, and you know what, uh, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Uh, I hope over time we can actually evolve our discussion between platform v. platform, which I would argue is a very 20th century uh, discussion, to a network v. network. Because to actually have a comparison, it's not about what the F-35 or the J-20 or the F-22 or the J-31 can actually do in a you know, 1 v. 1. That's, that's almost a, it's an interesting dialogue to have. But it's actually not very compelling because we're not going to ever have the F-35 in it there by itself, ever. We do family of systems. What really counts is the fact that we're going to bring a network, a family of systems to bear on the enemy. And that's going to be an F-35 that's there with an F-22, that's there with an F-18, that's there with you know, a, a space capabilities that's being fed into the cockpit, that's there with cyber capabilities that's there with high altitude ISR, that's there with you know, a, 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 a submarine force, that's there, right? We're gonna bring multi-domain, multi-component capabilities, and we're gonna bring coalition capabilities because I don't see uh, conflict in the future changing from a strategy that's by, with, and through allies and partners. So for me to answer the question about what the J31 versus one particular platform, I, I'm, I won't go there because, again, what we really need to have a discussion about is what's the network that we will be up against between the family of systems that we're going to bring to bear. That's going to be our asymmetric advantage because we're going to, as we do today, in the future, we're going to be able to achieve decision speed and maneuver forces from all domains and create so many dilemmas for the enemy that that in itself will become a deterrent value. Great, okay, next question. One right here. Uh, Pin Liu, Fulan China, you stay me. You know, uh, this month, uh, Marine Corps F1, uh, F-35 has landed in Japan, and uh, uh, Asia and the Pacific Commander has uh, held it as uh, the um, beginning of a new aviation era. So, uh, what is the future of our Air Force's F-35 and uh, its uses in the Asia Pacific area? Thank you. Yes, let me, I'm gonna, let me repeat your question just to make sure I have it right, because F-35 going into Japan? The role of the F-35 in basically in the Asia Pacific in the oh, future, okay. I believe, is the, is the question. So it, it's actually part of a, you know, an interesting dialogue about the continued um, balance in the Pacific. For the Air Force, it's actually an interesting story because we actually haven't changed significantly our footprint in the Pacific over time. It's actually been fairly stable you know, over time. Matter of fact, there's some folks up on the front row here, I think, who commanded uh, over there in the Pacific. And we really haven't changed our force structure. But if you look at everywhere else in the world, we've changed it significantly. You know, when I served in Europe not that long ago, we had 11 wings and 39 squadrons in Europe. We got three wings and nine squadrons total right now in Europe. So the balance in the Pacific is actually more not about what we've added to the Pacific, but the fact that we've kept the Pacific very stable from an air component standpoint while we've taken other forces down in other areas. So now specific to the F-35, it actually goes to my previous uh, answer, which is the F-35 will always be part of a network. But we built the F-35 so that it has the capability of information fusion that we have actually not seen on previous aircraft. It is its own sensor. 
And so let me describe for you what the F-35 debut looked like at Red Flag in an F-35B, Bravo, with young Marine Corps Captain Hedges on his mission commander check ride, leading 100 aircraft into battle on the Nellis Range Space in Nevada at 2 o'clock in the morning in his F-35B. The cyber campaign had been raging before he actually stepped to the airplane. And when he gets into the airplane, he's already getting indications sent to him on how that campaign is going before he's even taxied. The space campaign has been raging for 30 minutes before he gets actually on the tanker. And we're using actual techniques over the Nellis Ranges as we're, we're, we're doing the operations in space. They're supporting his campaign plan. While he pushes across the line against the most robust enemy uh, integrated air missile defense system that we could put up against him, with 100 aircraft crossing the line, he gets told that he has a high value target convoy that's in the middle of the range while he's flying and he has to, he has to maneuver forces and call an audible in the middle of the fight while he's doing that. Then he gets told that an F-16's been shot down and he has to orchestrate an entire combat search and rescue in the middle of that campaign. He's calling audibles as the quarterback of the entire joint force based on the displays that he's got in his cockpit and the fusion of information that he's getting from both on in his cockpit and from all the other aspects of the na network. That's the F-35. And so if you don't think about the network and how the F-35 controls, dominates, and uses the network, you're not having a 21st century conversation about the family of systems that we bring to the fight. Okay, we have a question right here. Good morning, my name is Danielle. I'm from the Arms Control Association, and actually my question is also about the F-35. Obviously it's a big expense. And from my understanding, um, it was a model for the export chain of production. And is there a possibility of the export chain use still a possibility in future arms and military production due to the big expense of the F-35? Yeah, make sure I got it. All right, this is a question about the, the production line and the yes. numbers coming off the line? Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's actually, again, go, sort of goes back to my three hats. So as a, as a service chief, I've got to make sure that the United States Air Force, part of that line, maintains the pace that we need to be able to get as many F-35s as we can get as soon as we can get them. In my role as, the, as a joint chief, as the largest customer, I have a responsibility and obligation to my fellow joint chiefs, you know, General Neller and Admiral Richardson, who are also procuring F-35 versions to ensure that, that I'm working with the, the contractor to keep that line healthy for them. And then in my third hat, as a global air chief, I've got a responsibility to all my fellow global air chiefs who are either already in the program or contemplating getting into the program to make sure that the line gets healthy and stays healthy as part of this program. So right now, uh, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of, uh, of discussion lately about cost of the F-35, we know where we're going with the F-35. I will tell you that I just described the F-35 Bravo's debut. We recently had the F-35 Alpha debut in Red Flag, and it performed, I mean, it really performed brilliantly. Part of what we struggle with right now is that it's been so long since we've procured a new aircraft that we've lost a little bit of our muscle memory of what it's like to actually bring on a new weapon system. And so what I found happens is that we keep thinking in too long that this is a PowerPoint aircraft. We got 100 aircraft flying. We've literally flown thousands of hours on this aircraft. The, the Marines have, have already done a, a combat deployment. We're getting ready to do a combat deployment uh, in the F-35. I mean, we're initial operating capable. This is not a PowerPoint airplane. This is an aircraft that's flying and is ready for combat. So my job in those three hats are to ensure that we continue to bring on that capability because it's not only what the nation needs, because it's, it's, it's the quarterback of our family of systems, it's also what my, my joint partners need and it's what my fellow Global Air Chiefs need. 
Thanks.